Welcome to the Harper Classroom. Series of instructional videos. This video is on moving average forecasting, part two. We'll look at a moving average technique where we're assuming a stationary time series and random component. And we'll be looking at the simplicity of moving average and the power of moving average. First, the simplicity. We take a weekly time series and we apply a three point moving average and we simply just take any three contiguous values and average them and that's the forecast for the very next time period. So if I average time period 1, 2, 3, that's the forecast for time period 4. Then I move to the next three. Those at, that was the th average of 2, 3, and 4 is the forecast for time period 5. I keep moving down until I get to time period 13, which is the future, and I average always the last three values to forecast the future. If I have a 5-point moving average with a window of 5, I average 5 values and that's the forecast for the very next time period. Then I move to the next five. Then I go to the last five to forecast time period 13. And so the simplicity of moving average is whatever your window is, and that's given in this uh, series of videos, you just average those, and that's the forecast for the very next time period. And I plot it down here so you can see the plot of your moving average, and there's my MA3, which is my squares, there's my forecast for the future. Now, the power of moving average. We'll be looking at three characteristics, the impulse response, noise dampening, and filtering. First, impulse response. Here we have a weekly time series, and in this time series it's going along 25, 25, 25, until time period 6 to 7, it jumps to 55, and then stays at 55. So we go, we're going along here 25, then between 6 and 7 it jumps to 55. With this jump, this step function, this increase, if it's important, it's called an impulse. So here we have an impulse in our time series. Sometimes it's referred to as a signal. If we apply a three-point moving average, well, beginning 25, 25, 25, the average is just 25. But when we come to the step function, or the increase, or the impulse, we have 25, 25, 55, that average then becomes 35. So for time period 8, we have 35, so we plot it. Then the next three we have for time period 9, we have 45. Then finally we hit all three 55s and we have 55. So when we look at this time series where we applied our three-point moving average, uh, when this impulse happened, the MA3 responded to it. But once it happened, it took one, two, three time periods to respond and that's called response time. And notice that's the same as the window. So the moving aver average window is the same as response time to an impulse. So we have a five point moving average and we plot it here. Once the impulse happens, since the window is five, it takes one, two, three, four, five time periods to respond. So the shorter the window, the faster the response time, and it's referred to as an enhanced impulse response. But also, the difference between a time series, which is an observed value, and the forecast, which is an estimated value, that difference is called bias. And so if I want to reduce that bias faster, I use a shorter window. So a shorter window also has the enhanced bias reduction characteristic. Next, we have noise dampening. Here we have a time series, a weekly time series, and if we plot the time series, we can see it does have an increase and decrease. If those changes are important, they're impulses. If they're not important, they're called noise, or random error, or randomness, or volatility. If I apply a three-point moving average and apply it as my squares, then I apply a five-point moving average and plot it as my triangles, let's interpret to see what we have here. First of all, the time series has the minimum value of 21, the maximum value of 25, and that difference there is the magnitude or power of that time series. But when I apply a three-point moving average, which is my squares, the magnitude of the power of that time series has been reduced. If I apply a five-point moving average, it's reduced even more. So when you reduce the magnitude or the power or the amplitude of a time series, it's called dampening. And so if I want to increase the dampening, 
the larger window is referred to as an enhanced noise dampening capability. Well, when you start dampening the noise or volatility of a time series, remember your moving average is really forecasts. So if you dampen the noise in your forecast, essentially you're stabilizing your forecasts. Because remember, the noise is just random error. You don't want to model noise. You want to dampen out the noise or dampen out the vol volatility. And so the larger window will stabilize your forecasts. The next characteristic is filtering. Here we have another time series, 21, 22, 26, 21, 22, 26. And if I apply my three-point moving average, I'm going to apply it as a filtering tool, not a forecasting tool. And what that means is, when I average three values, I apply that average to the middle of that interval. Not the next time period, but the middle of the interval. Then I move to the next three. Then I move to the next three. So when I plot these, I'm really using moving average as a filtering technique, not a forecasting technique. So when I plot the moving average, I have a straight line. So interpret what we have. Let me, some, let me introduce some terms. Well, first of all, the periodicity is the points in a pattern. Well, you see our time series here has uh, three points here, but that pattern repeats. 21, 22, 26, 21, 22, 26. And there's three points in that pattern. So the points in the pattern is called the periodicity of that component. So this component is a repeating component with a periodicity of three. If the pattern that's repeating is a year, it's called a seasonal component, as we saw in part one. But if the pattern is not a year, something other than a year, it's called a cyclical component. Well, now let's see what we have here. We have a time series with a component with a periodicity of three. We apply a three-point moving average, and the result is a time series which has a straight line where that component is removed. When you remove a component, that's called filtering. Well, filtering a component is when you have the window equal to the periodicity. So to filter out a component with a periodicity of three, you apply a three-point moving average, and then the result is a time series where that component is completely removed or completely filtered. Now, filtering is very powerful. It's used in a lot of different areas. It's used in something called the decomposition of time series, which we will look at in this series, where you de decompose the time series into its different components, estimate the parameters, then put them back together to obtain your forecasts. That's part of the forecasting process. But filtering is also used in ARIMA models of time series analysis. ARIMA models are more advanced techniques, which we will not look at in this series. ARIMA stands for Autoregressive Integrated Moving Average. And in these ARIMA models, you estimate your components, you determine parameters of your components, put it into a model, an ARIMA model, then you can forecast the future. Well, that ends the Moving Average Forecasting Part 2 video. I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.